Welcome to River of Life Bible College and this is lesson one of our authority as a believer. So if you want to join with River of Life Bible College then uh, you need to do so by contacting our office at riveroflifeuk at hotmail.com riveroflifeuk at hotmail.com if you want to do the diploma in biblical studies from a Hebraic perspective. So it's not too late to join uh, as it's online. The modules can be downloaded to you as well as any handouts and also you'll be receiving some uh, books as well. Okay, so it's uh, so you can just do that by going to our River of Life UK at hotmail.com. So without further ado, we are going to uh, get into uh, our teaching for today. As I said, Authority of the Believer and our first lesson today is going to be called Your Position in Christ. Now, lots of Christians, they do not know their position in, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, they've given their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ, but they really don't know what that, what, what, benefits if any that has apart from having eternal life um, many Christians unfortunately believe that uh, you're just going to have to suffer this world as best you can get through it as best you can and because you've given your life to Jesus uh, you'll go to heaven one day and that's about it for many many Christians unfortunately because they have not received the teaching as regards their position in the Lord Jesus Christ once they've given their lives to the Lord. So this is what we're going to have a look at today. And for our first scripture, we're going to go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle and over all the earth, mm, dominion, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. And God made man in his own image, in the image of God, that's quite crucial to remember that, that we have been made in the image of God. Created he him male and female, and God blessed them. Amen, what does that mean, bless? Well, we'll go into that a little bit more later on. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion. Oh, there's that word dominion again. Dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. So, God gave Adam dominion. What does dominion mean? That means authority and power. And he gave him dominion over the fish of the sea, etc. Over all the earth. So Adam was to have dominion over all the earth, which means authority and power. Okay. Blessed. Ooh, what does that mean? Blessed. Well, because God has blessed us, that means he has anointed us. He has anointed us. He has empowered us to be able to do what he's called us to do. So to be blessed means to be anointed as the most high God. Jesus in the Hebrew is Messiah, Ha-Mashiach, Ha-Mashiach. And Mashiach means Messiah, it means the anointed one. Wow. Wow anointed which means to be blessed to be empowered to prosper because Jesus was anointed for a specific task and uh, the Lord blessed him to fulfill that task so when you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ you have dominion wow you have dominion you have authority and power you are blessed, you are anointed, you are empowered to prosper and have good success. You are empowered to carry out the mandate that God has given to you. You are empowered to have that dominion 
because dominion speaks of authority and to be blessed speaks of the anointing, the empowerment. And then the Lord says, be fruitful, be fruitful. So what does that mean? It means you're going to produce. You're not going to stay the same. You know, it's not, oh, well, I've given my life to Jesus and one day I'll go to heaven and well, I just have to do the best that I can to get through this life, knowing that whatever happens to me, whether it's sickness, whether it's disease, whether it's poverty, well, Jesus is with me and he'll He'll see me through it all. Yes, he will, but you're not really ruling and reigning in Christ, which is what this is talking about. Mm. But you might argue, yes, but we've lost all that. Yes, Jesus has come and he's blessed us to have eternal life but we just have to you know get through this world as best we can in the meantime until we go to be be with him in heaven well i'm going to show to you today that that's not quite true yes we are going to go to heaven yes we have eternal life in jesus name if you've made him lord and savior of your life but he doesn't call us to then just suffer and just do our best to get by and until the sweet by and by comes so to speak Okay, so we're to be fruitful, we're to bear much fruit. Glory to God. And multiply. Wow, what does multiplication mean? It means increase. It means you're not going to stay where you are, just muddling on through this life, you know, thinking, well, I'm saved, so I'm going to go to heaven and I just have to do the best I can whilst I'm here. The Lord called Adam to multiply. So, you might say, well, that apply to Adam. That doesn't apply to us. Finally, we're to replenish the earth. Hmm, what does replenish mean? It means to restore. It means everything's going to be replenished. It's going to be renewed. Wow. Ooh, that applies to your physical body too. Everything's going to be restored. Everything and anything that the devil has stolen is restored. It's, it's replenished and everything is made new. Yes, everything is made new, everything is renewed, replenished. Wow. Adam disobeyed God. Now this is where we come to a very crucial point here. Adam disobeyed God, but Jesus, and in the Hebrew his name is Yeshua, which means salvation, Jesus reversed the curse. Mm. Okay, Genesis 3.15. Let's just quickly go to that. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. It shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Who is that referring to? That's referring to Jesus, Yeshua. And because it's, it just mentions the one seed here, mm, which is Jesus. So the devil knew from that moment onwards that salvation would come through the womb of a woman. Yes the womb of a woman and so he then set out to try to do his utmost to destroy mankind so that this this seed that was going to reverse the curse could not come and as jesus himself said salvation is of the jews so that the devil knew that when god set apart a nation uh, through abraham coming out of ur of the chaldeans when God set apart this nation that he was going to use through whom he could birth the Messiah, the anointed one, that was going, who was going to reverse this curse, the curse that came into, into the garden through Adam's disobedience, there would be a second Adam who would reverse that curse and his name is Jesus. So the enemy has down through the ages done his absolute utmost to destroy the, the Hebrew race, the Jewish people, because he knew that Jesus, the Messiah, was going to come out of that particular nation. Mm. And he's still fighting that nation today because he's still trying to thwart God's will, plan and purpose for the nation of Israel. But that's another topic. Let's get back to our position in Christ. So the law was then brought in to reveal to us our need of a saviour. There are actually not just 10 commandments, but in total there are 613 laws called the law of Moses. Yes, 
that was brought in on Mount Sinai. The first 10 is kind of like a synopsis of those, but in total there's 613 laws. Now it is absolutely impossible for anyone in their natural strength to fulfill those laws. So the law was brought in to reveal to humankind that we need a savior, that we need a savior. Glory to God, that we need God, that we can't do it in our own strength, that we need, we need God because no one can fulfill those laws. That's what religion talks about. Religion talks about laws and fulfilling laws so that you can get closer to, closer to God. But God says, well, all your righteousness, in other words, your way of doing things to try to reach me is as filthy rags. You can't reach God in your own strength, in your own natural strength. It's impossible because God is perfection. He is perfect. And we cannot reach our Heavenly Father. We cannot cry out, Abba, Father, without knowing our Saviour jesus christ and believing in him and having given our lives to him it is only then and this is called the born again experience so if you're not born again today then you need jesus you need to give your life to jesus right now just open your heart to him say lord i love you that's all i did in 1991 i just simply said lord i love you got on my knees and said lord i love you and that was enough the peace of god just filled my heart and I knew then I was right. I was in right standing. I had now been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. But if you have given your life to Jesus, then let's carry on with more about your position in Christ. So let's now go to Galatians 3.13. Galatians 3.13. So we're going to go to the new covenant now. Galatians 3.13. Praise the Lord. And I think you'll find that this is going to be a real blessing to you. Praise you, Jesus. So Galatians 3.13. So Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, that the blessing of Abraham, the promise of the Spirit, the anointing, so can come upon us so that we can then be fruitful and we can multiply and we can replenish the earth. So in Galatians 3.13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham, and this is important, might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And in verse 29, it goes on to say, and if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed? Whoa. And heirs, you're an heir according to the promise. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So if you are a born again believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, then you are the seed of Abraham and all the blessings of Abraham has now come upon you. What are the blessings of Abraham? Well, Deuteronomy 28 lists lots and lots of blessings there. Those are just a few. But, you know, in your own time, go to Deuteronomy 28 and read through the blessings. There's also all the curses there as well, which Jesus has redeemed us from. So it's quite a good idea to read Deuteronomy 28 and familiarize yourself with those wonderful blessings that the Lord has purchased back with his blood for us because we're now under all the blessings of Abraham. And more than this, we have a new and better covenant than even Abraham had. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. So in the name of Yeshua, we now have authority and dominion. Well, dominion is authority. So you now have dominion. Praise the Lord over the earth. The second Adam, Jesus, has reversed the curse against us, brought into the world by the first Adam. So we are now under all of the blessings, all of the blessings. Hallelujah, praise you, Jesus. We are now empowered to prosper. We now have the anointing, Mashiach, the anointing of the Lord upon us to prosper. We are now called to be fruitful, to bear much fruit. 
and to multiply, to increase, to increase, amen, and to replenish, to restore, glory to God, everything that the enemy has ever stolen, restoration, hallelujah, isn't that good news? So it's not, oh, we're just going to suffer this world through the seat, sweet by and by until we go to be with Jesus, oh, there's a hymn that like that, that people sing, that many Christians sing, no, we're called to have dominion. Jesus brought that dominion for us. Yes, he's the second Adam. Glory to God. Because he came in the flesh. He had to come in the flesh in order to do the work that he did in order to reverse the curse. Yes, he went down into hell for us. He paid the price for all of our sin. He reversed that curse. Now we have dominion. Now we have authority. Jesus said in Matthew, um, I have been given power over all of the earth glory to god because he is in he has the flesh of a human being now because it's because god gave that dominion to to mankind so that's why jesus had to come in the flesh in order to take it back yes and now you have it glory to god you have authority you have dominion now you have authority and dominion over your life and over over the your sphere of influence amen you are blessed, you are anointed, you are called to be fruitful, to bear much fruit for the glory of God, to multiply, to increase, and to replenish, to restore. Glory to God. So, as, Matthew, as um, Jesus said in Matthew 28, 18, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Now, in heaven speaks of him being son of God, because he's the son of God, yes? And in earth, because he's son of man. Whenever he referred to his title as son of man, that he was referring to his humanity, that he was God come in the flesh. Amen. So he's the son of God and he's the son of man. He has power in heaven and he has power on the earth through his body. And that's you. Through his body. And that is you. Glory to God. Amen. Colossians 3 1. Let's have a look at Colossians 3 1 and ask yourself the question. Ask yourself the question Are you risen with Christ? Are you risen with Christ? So, 3 1. If you are risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Mm -hmm. In other words, put your focus on God and on His Word. Where Christ sits at the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For you are dead. That means you're referring to your old nature, your old man. And your life is now hid with Christ Jesus, with Christ in God. Okay, praise the Lord. So your life is now hidden in Christ. So don't come out of that hiding place. Okay, uh, I did want to try to show you a picture of the Ark of the Covenant, but for technical reasons, um, I haven't been able to do so. But if you have a look at the mercy seat of the covenant, you will see the two cherubim hovering, oh, covering the mercy seat where Jesus would have sprinkled his blood. He sprinkled his blood on the Ark of the Covenant here in this world. More about that in another another um that's another module but he also sprinkled his seat in heaven on the mercy seat in heaven the ark of the covenant in heaven so you need to hide yourself in that mercy seat glory to god the top of the mercy seat is solid gold which speaks of divinity it speaks of dominion it speaks of authority it speaks of power and you need to hide yourself constantly in christ how do you do that you stay in his word you stay fellowshipping with him you stay focused upon him all the time don't come out from your hiding place because then the enemy will have you okay you have to stay in the mercy seat of God and to stay in the mercy seat of God means to, to love the Lord your God with all your heart soul mind and strength and to love love your neighbor as yourself in other words it's a love walk you have to walk the narrow path 
that Jesus spoke about, because wide is the way to destruction, but you need to walk that narrow path of love in order to retain your dominion and your authority and your anointing to be fruitful, to multiply and to replenish and restore. But in order to do so, you need to keep in that narrow walk. Yes, with the Lord Jesus Christ. Keep focused on his word. Keep focused on things above. Not on the situations and circumstances that are happening around you, for they are subject to change. And it's up to you to use your authority and dominion and power to change them. Glory to God. Did you ever once see Jesus ruffled? Did you ever once see Jesus in a panic? Did you ever once see Jesus running around? <laughs> I must admit, I was doing a little bit of that this morning, trying to get all the technical side sorted for this, this broadcast. But um, no, he stayed in that secret place. Psalm 91, he stayed in that secret place. Amen. His focus was on God the Father all the time. He said to his disciples, I can only do what I see my father doing. So his focus was on the Father all the time. He wasn't focused on what the enemy was doing. He wasn't focused on the situations and circumstances around him because he knew that they were subject to change. Look how he used his authority when the storm brewed up and the disciples thought they were all going to perish on the lake, uh, on the Sea of Galilee. Yeah? But Jesus just used his authority and power and he spoke to the winds and the waves and he said peace be still well that's what you need to do yes if you're hid with christ if you know that you are risen with christ yes you are actually risen with christ and your position in christ is far above all principalities powers rulers and authorities in high places referring to the principalities and works of the evil one you are seated with jesus Oh, glory to God. Whew, I can just imagine some of you thinking, is that right? I'm seated with Jesus? Yes, that's your position in Christ. You are seated with Jesus. Let's go to Ephesians 2, 6. Okay, because some of you may be thinking right now, oh, I've never heard anything like this before. Um, Ephesians 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. And the Apostle Paul says here that the Lord has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So that's your position. You are a co-heir with Christ Jesus. And you have authority and you have power over all the works of the evil one. Amen. But it's up to you to enforce it. You can't just sit around and think, oh dear, well, I've just got to suffer this and suffer that. And case or asara, what may be will be. And mm, at least I'm going to heaven. No. That Jesus shed his precious blood for you to be seated with him. You are a co heir with Christ Jesus, you are seated with him in heavenly places. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So when you know your position in Christ, yes, you can then step out in faith in the full assurance of your position. And this seeks to serve as an anchor of your soul. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's go to Hebrews 6.19. Hebrews 6.19. Praise you, Jesus. Bless you, Lord. Let's go to Hebrews 6 and verse 19. Praise you, Jesus. Hebrews 6. Nineteen. Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters into that within the veil. Whoa, that means you've, you've now gone through the veil. You are now in the holiest of holies. That is your position. 
The other day, the Lord blessed me with a vision of the Ark of the Covenant. It was absolutely awesome. The glory of God was was shining upon the Ark like a like a golden light. And there I saw the sh the cherubim and the solid gold and the mercy seat with the sprinkled blood of Christ upon it. Hallelujah. And then below the top, the solid gold top of the Ark of the Covenant is a, like a rectangular box underneath. And in the rectangular box would be the law and the manna and Aaron's rod. Manna, bread of life, rod, authority, and then the law. Now Jesus came to fulfill the law and the prophets. In him, we fulfill the 613 laws, but only in Christ, because he was perfectly obedient. He fulfilled the law and the prophets. Glory to God. And uh, it's overlaid with gold. Gold stands for, for kingship, for divinity, but underneath is acacia wood. And the acacia wood is a very, very strong wood. It's resistant to insects. Okay, it's very, very strong. But it speaks of Jesus' humanity. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And the angels are covering. So when you're in the mercy seat of God, when you're in your position in Christ, yes, our Father just sees the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. And nothing can touch you. Nothing can touch you. Not, not, no work of the devil can touch you. But you need to take your authority in Christ Jesus. You're the one now who has dominion. Jesus came to restore that dominion back to us. Because Jesus said to the disciples, you know, all authority and power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Now you go. <laughs> because as the body of Yeshua, as the body of Christ, we are in his image. Just as God made Adam in the image of God. Yes, I told you to, to try to focus and remember that image. We are now the image of Christ. We are now Christians, <laughs> little Christs walking around in this world and it's up to us to fulfill our heavenly father's will on earth yes just as jesus when he came fulfilled his father's will on earth it's now up to us as the body of jesus the body of yeshua to fulfill our father's will in this earth you know jesus taught us to pray our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Glory to God. So that's your position in Christ. Enter into the mercy seat. Yes, stay hid in Christ and use your authority, use your dominion. Be fruitful, multiply, increase, replenish and restore. That is now your mandate on this earth, wherever God has placed you, wherever the Lord has placed you, whatever he has given you to do. That is your authority and that is your mandate. Okay. For those um, Bible school students that have, you know, uh, joined and paid up their fees, etc., uh, you will be receiving uh, books and handouts to help you with, with this course, um, which is 11 lessons in total. Okay. And then at the end of those 11 lessons, you will take an online exam and... As you know, you also need to be thinking about um, your assignment that you're going to do, your dissertation of 5,000 words. And that should be in an area that uh, you feel God has called you to be, but you need to uh, communicate with the college to make sure that the assignment that you want to do is is okay with with the college. Okay, so, you, so you're going to do 12 modules in total. Okay, uh, the first four will be recorded and broadcast uh, in, the, in this, this session, uh, this term as it were. Uh, and then uh, there's going to be another four and then another four. So 12 in total. So that's 12 online exams to pass plus, plus your uh, dissertation as well. Okay, so you might be thinking about your dissertation right now. In the meantime, uh, after this lesson, 
just go to the scriptures, study them in full, all the scriptures that I've mentioned, okay. And uh, for our students that have enrolled and, and fully paid their fees, then uh, you will receive also extra handouts, etc. So, till we meet again on our next lesson on the authority as a believer, and we will continue with examining our position in Christ and the authority that we now have in Jesus Christ. Absolutely fundamental for you to, to know and fully understand your position in Christ if you're going to walk in victory in your Christian life. Okay, so that's all for now.